Well, they told me the stories where you tell a story that you would never tell ever, right? But I don't really have any of those. Like, I would just tell all my stories. Um, but this story, uh, a, a Comedy Central publicist asked me to stop telling <laughs> on a publicity tour. So I guess you be the judge. Um, but it was a long time ago, too. I was in my early 20s, and uh, I had this one-nighter in Ottawa, Canada. I had two, two friends that come me, this guy Tim that I rode up with, and this guy Buddy who set the whole thing up. And it was for the animation festival, okay, because we were pitching a cartoon. And he set it up at this comedy club in Ottawa that we were going to do a, a comedy at the end of the, you know, end of the festival comedy show. So I had never met the other guy, Tim, who was driving. And uh, I show up late. And me, this guy Tim's a good friend of mine now, okay, but he just hated my guts when I met him because I showed up late and I uh, slept most of the drive. Did you ever do that? Just be like a shitty car friend? <laughs> and not stay awake a little bit for like a six hour drive? I was like, pleased to meet you. <laughs> just right out. <laughs> and uh, we get up there and I was annoyed with this guy Tim because it, he had never been to Canada either. This is my first time going to Canada, okay? And it's not like going to Montreal or going to uh, uh, Vancouver or Toronto or someplace cool. This is Ottawa, their capital. It's just a blocky, stupid looking place. It looks like, if you remember the game Grand Theft Auto 3, it looks like that. And I had a feeling that I could just grab someone out of their car and take the, and then just change my shirt and they would never catch me. Like I had a very distinct feeling. It was like a Lego town, okay? So Tim's never been there. Now, if you've ever been going to Canada with someone who's ever been to Canada, uh, there's, there's, there's some kind of person who like sucks up to Canada when they get there, okay? I don't know how, this is the best way to describe it. We, we get up there and everybody's like, oh, it's so much better. Like the second we get there, it's suddenly so much better. And we order breakfast and he gets uh, Canadian bacon. He goes, oh, this bacon's so good. It's so much better than American bacon. It's just fucking ham, dickhead. <laughs> He's just, just blowing every Canadian. And, uh, we go and do the show. Canada is a delightful place to perform. It's like, I, I, normally I go to Canada and I feel like, uh, like when C-3PO was telling Ewoks about the Death Star, where he's like doing the sound effects, like, ooh, like it, they're very impressed easily. <laughs> okay, but this time I, the show didn't go too well for me. And uh, I guess Ottawa, they're like more polite or something. They're pass what they are is passive aggressive, okay? <laughs> Those of you from Minnesota or Wisconsin get that, right? Um, and I'm a, I, I don't do passive, I just do aggressive. So I'm just that kind of person that some people, you know, I don't have the ability not to be how I am. So you're gonna have to meet me halfway and some people don't want to and it creates friction, okay? So I did with this crowd, and, uh, but they were still very nice, right? Everybody, all the, whole, all the employees were like, oh, you guys were great, even though I totally stunk it up. And, uh, and I would had been drinking, and they go, because anything we can get you? And I'm like, yeah, can you find me some blow? I want some blow. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I, they, they, had been, they might have not even been asking what I want, and I just said, find me some blow, if I'm being honest. <laughs> well, thinking back, I might have just blurted that out at just people. And uh, so somebody ran and found cocaine for me. Like, in fact, now that I think about it, they didn't ask me. I, before the show even started, I asked somebody for that. And while I was on, someone was out finding cocaine for me. <laughs> and, uh, cause, but that's how, you know, at this, I don't even drink anymore because I really never liked alcohol, I realized. I was just on coke, so that's why I drink. Uh, but at the time when I was doing that, you know, when you first start doing drugs, it, you, you get your first mood enhancer, and then you're like, you know what would make this even better? Some other shit, right? So that's what this story is, is that, that little balancing act, right? Where you think you're going to fix the the one thing and then you just create more problems and you have a mess. That's how this ended up. So this guy brings me cocaine. Oh, by the way, I'm staying in a penthouse, a, a Canada style <laughs> hotel penthouse. What, a, what an adorable concept of a penthouse. What a socialist bullshit penthouse. <laughs> it was like one sizable room and I had to sleep on a trundle bed and Tim took the regular. They had a trundle bed and a, and a penthouse, okay? So Tim had the regular bed because he had a back problem, he said. Uh, so this employee brings me cocaine. I'm like, cool, let's give you some coke. And they're like, oh, we don't do that. None of the people that went and looked for cocaine for me did cocaine. It was just me. <laughs> Think of that, that's how different it is in Canada. Here, in, just in New York, if you do cocaine, you gotta 
no, we don't have Coke. Get the fuck away from us. You got to be like that. <laughs> right? In Canada, they'll go get you Coke that they don't want any part of. <laughs> That's how nice they are. So, <laughs> this Coke. And uh, I'm like, wait, none of you guys gonna, I don't want to do Coke by myself. Because that's just going to be a real weird masturbation festival, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to have that. I'm trying to have the other experience where you share way too much of your life with a stranger. <laughs> so they're all like, yeah, sorry, we don't do it. And then just from out of the darkness, <laughs> this Canadian guy comes out like, I'll do coke with you, eh? <laughs> and he said, hey, by the way, I met at least three people that said, A, hey, like a stereotype. And you're like, oh, they don't all do that. These three people said A after every word. And he goes, I'll do coke with you, A. I'm like, all right, I don't know you. Come back to my hotel room with me. And uh, he was a Canadian, like their version of the NFL. He was a Canadian football player. So, yeah. And, uh, who gives a shit? He'll do coke with me. So, whatever. Okay? So, me and this guy are sitting there uh, just blowing lines. By the way, how good is this coke going to be if I got it in Ottawa, Canada? How many times... And that's the reason I don't even do it anymore, because I'm sick of snorting baby laxatives and, you know, drywall. <laughs> and, and, but at this time, I'm an idiot in my life, so I'm like, yeah, fine, I'll just snort this. So I'm doing it, it feels awful, okay? I don't know what the fuck I'm snorting, but it feels terrible. But we're all wired up from it. Then Tim, the guy who I just drove up with, who hates my guts, walks in, sees a stranger he doesn't know, a little pile of cocaine. <laughs> and the phone book opened, because my friend was like, let's get some whores, eh? <laughs> okay? I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm practically a rock star, okay? Of course we're gonna get some whores. Uh, which is, that's the kind of drug it is, where you're like, yeah, let's get some whores. And then, meanwhile, your dick's not gonna work for whores, idiot. <laughs> so, he goes to the phone book. Tim just looks at us like disgusted and goes in the, the penthouse suite and shuts the doors. <laughs> the other guy picks up the phone and uh, orders two girls from his escort service. It was a buck fifty, which is pretty low. And the exchange rate was good at the time. So it was a deal, okay? <laughs> they weren't from Ottawa, they were coming from Montreal, so that's a good deal. And uh, I'm sitting there like, oh, all right, cool, getting some more. And I'm like, oh wait, I'm on coke, how am I, what, how am I gonna do this? So look, the other guy, Buddy, who set this show up, I knew he had uh, Cialis, okay? So I'm like, I'll just go down to Buddy's room, get some Cialis, be ready for these hookers, right? Uh, so I go bang on his door. He won't answer the door. I'm like, why is he not answering? He knows I might need Cialis because I got cut. <laughs> Bang on his door. Um, well, I didn't notice because we were just getting high for so long that it was four in the morning and he was dead asleep. <laughs> so he comes and I'm banging on the door. He comes like, what? What do you want? I'm like, dude, I need some of that Cialis you got. We got horse coming. It's really important. I'm on coke. Um, and he's like, and then he did give me a Cialis. He was really upset, but he gave me a Cialis. So I pop, I'm like, all right. Bring on the horse, right? And uh, so you know, I just walked into my room to tell this stranger, good news, I got a dick pill, so we can do this. And then uh, the, the, the escort showed up immediately. The second I came back up, they showed up. So this stuff has not worked yet, okay? And now things are moving really quickly. Uh, so two girls walk in. Both of them say A a lot, like this guy. Uh, he immediately grabs the better looking girl one of them's like kind of, uh, I don't even know what back, you know, it's Canada, so she's probably like Lebanese and Dutch or some weird shit, you don't see. Uh, you don't know any Lebanese Dutch people outside of Canada. She, uh, but she was cute. And the other girl, she was pretty, but a little bit heavier. So he jumped on the less heavy one, okay? But whatever, I'm fine with that. The problem is, Desialis has not kicked in yet. And as I'm looking at the girl, there's something like wrong that I can't put my finger on, okay? There's just something wrong with it. And I'm like, all right. No, it's not. That would have been better. I know what you're thinking. It's not that. <laughs> I see where this is going. This is, that would have been a little, a little bit less embarrassing. Uh, so he jumps on his. He just starts fucking immediately. And I mean, like, he's doing, like, the pile driver and shit. Like, shit that nobody actually does, but you just see in porn. He's just doing on the living room floor. Well, I'm like, wow, your dick's amazing, dude. You did the same amount of coke I did. I'm sitting there like, maybe jerk it a second. And she's like, mm. I'm like, you guys want some coke? I'm like, we don't do that. <laughs> the two hookers are nice girls that don't do coke. Okay. So meanwhile, the guy, he sees I'm having trouble. So I think he's like, I'll just, it's probably because I'm here with this. You know, they're polite. And he's like, it's probably because we're in here. He goes, we're going to go in the other room. And I'm like, isn't that where Tim is? All right, go ahead, another room. 
okay? I found out later, he apparently just barged into Tim's room while he's asleep, said, hey, we're gonna fuck on the end of the bed, okay? A complete stranger. Where's that, Tim? Tim doesn't even know me. So the guy, so Tim's like, why don't you get the fuck out of my room? The call girl's like, we really apologize. This is very rude, eh? She had some nice manners. She's like, this guy, I don't know what his problem is. Um, meanwhile, there's no luck for me. It's still, mm -hmm. They come back, I'm overhearing him like, I'm gonna come on your face, okay? And she's like, no, you're not. They're having an argument where he's gonna come. Uh, you know, I was like, guys, gotta keep it down. I gotta really concentrate on a thought that gave me a boner once, you know? Um, so then I have that, like, that pathetic cocaine, half hard, like, <laughs> Yeah, it was like, that'll be $150, please. A nice half hard, pathetic jizz, and oof, and uh, the girl picks up, the, takes the money, she goes, and they're getting ready to leave, she goes, that shit'll kill you, eh? And they walk out. <laughs> okay, so I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I mean, it was an experience. That's how I'm salvaging this in my head. I just paid $150 for something I could just could have done myself and probably had a better time with not a weird football player from Canada next to me. <laughs> okay, so, sitting there, and then, uh, and he's like, all right, well, I'm gonna take off my cool. And then all of a sudden, I feel something, and I'm like, oh, wait, you can't take Cialis with coke. You're not supposed to mix that. You know that, right? That'll kill you. Also, poppers, gay guys in here, I see you. Don't take poppers and mix cocaine. Cialis and coke, dawns on me, can give you a heart attack. It's, your, your, it's two things raising your blood pressure together. So they, like, they multiply. I don't know how it works, but it can kill you. So I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, I'm gonna have a heart attack. I start panicking. Really bad on coke, okay? Loud enough that Tim wakes up again in the other room. The football player's like, okay, man, I can stay. Do you need me to stay? I'm like, don't leave me, dude. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. So I swear to God, this dude sits down and holds my hand while I panic. This strange football player. And then I get a full heart on. The, so I'm just sitting there with a, with a full boner, praying to Jesus that I don't die. While this Canadian holds my hand. Yeah, that guy stayed the whole night. He stayed almost the whole night with me to make sure I was okay. <laughs> and then he left. And uh, yeah, so I called Tim on my ride over here. I called Tim because I'm like, am I forgetting any, because he was there too. <laughs> I'm like, am I forgetting any details of this story? And one was the girl being really polite when the guy tried to barge in. And the other was, he was up all night listening to me and this jerk off tell our entire life stories to each other. <laughs> Now this is going back like 15 years maybe. Tim remembers this guy's whole, I don't remember shit about this dude besides I'll do coke, eh? That's a, that's a blank. <laughs> Fucking Tim had to listen to us tell each other the most jerked off hopes, boogie nights, sad ending hopes and dreams. Yeah, and, uh, and then on the way home he made fun of me and I'm very good friends with that guy now. And uh, I feel confident I could knock on his door any time of night and ask for Cialis, I can tell you that for a fact. Thank you very much.